Hi y'all, it's Gabriel. I'm here with y'all today to tell y'all about my new concept show I got coming up called Gabriel's Take. It's mainly about sports and entertainment, but mainly a lot of sports. And we're going to talk about just uh, NBA mainly. So I'm a big NBA fan. I have been for a long time since I was a kid. And right now we're going to talk about the NBA playoffs. Before we get into that, we're going to talk about the All-Star game last night and how Russell Westbrook, or as I like to call him, Russell West Cook, went off last night, finished with 41. Austin MVP was raining threes in the first half. I didn't get a chance to see the whole second half, but the first half he finished with 27. Man's unguardable, man's unstoppable. Only thing that gets in his way is himself and Scott Brooks. <laughs> I mean, if it was Scott Brooks, OKC, when KD and Russell are healthy, would have the best team in basketball every year since they've been together. Well, since they since they lost in the finals to LeBron. After that year, they shouldn't have got rid of James Harden, but the powers that be – Cause that to happen because of money, and I don't think he wanted to leave, but they could. They they shouldn't have kept Ibaka for one. They didn't. They they couldn't foresee Ibaka becoming this six ten freak of nature who can jump out the gym, who can block. This man can block Jesus going to the basket. That's how defensively good he is. But for some odd reason, they decided to keep him and not James Harden, who has become an MVP candidate this year. Do I agree with it? No. At the time, did I agree with it? No. I still don't. I still own 2K when I play with him. Want to put James Harden on that team because with that team, they'll be a superpower. Russell at the two, or Russell at the one, or you can pay James Harden at the one and Russell at the two. It really don't matter. They both can't rock like none other. KD at the three, Nick Collins at the four, and Steven Adams at the five. With Reggie, Bobby Schmurda Jackson coming off the bench, Jeremy Lamb, when he finally gets it together, coming off the bench at that seven option, and Dion, because they're going to get Dion again, and Perry Jones. Who had a, what, a 40, 30-point game this year? I mean, come on. That team, that starting five would be crazy. Crazy. Steven Adams and Nick Collins, man, the pain. Nick Collins has been a Seattle OKC guy for years. They love him there. They want to keep him there. And he's a great player. To, he, he's just start, be starting over Kendrick Perkins. Kendrick Perkins plays like he's in combat boots, man. Military issue combat boots. I wish I had a pair to show you right now. I'm going to have you some for y'all next segment. Combat boots. You know how hard it is playing combat boots? It is outrageously hard. They tell you not to because you can break an ankle. You can sever your whole damn calf leg. Your tendon might blow up. All that good stuff. And he's playing in combat boots every game. Scott Brooks, what are you doing? But that's just my take. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But we're going to get into it. Uh, I'm going to start off by giving you all a little about myself. My name's Gabriel. I love sports. That's evident. Carmelo Anthony is my favorite player in the league. It's kind of sucks as my Knicks are playing so, so bad. Trash, horrendous, whatever you want to say it. Boo-boo, like crap, whatever you want to call it. That's how they playing. I'll agree. I'm not going to disagree with you. But for the sake of this this kind of, this show, let's not talk about it until we need to, until they get better and we can reminisce on how bad they was. Uh Russ Westbrook, my second favorite player in the league, because that man plays like every kid needs to learn how to play. Aside from shooting 30 times a game, everybody, he plays with so much pride and so much just showmanship and so much energy and so much just, ah, uh, the man, what they say, Kyle Lurie said last night, that man tries to go through you at least four to five times a night just to make sure that you know he coming. What, what they do that at? You know what I'm saying? Like, what man comes down the court? He cooking and he says, oh, I'm about to go through your chest, bro. And you look at him like, hmm? Hmm? What was that? Hmm? He's going through your chest. And if he can't go through your chest, he's going to go over your head or he's going to hit you with that yak and hit the three. But, you know, I'm, I'm kind of biased towards Russ. I feel like he's the best point guard in basketball right now. He's a top five player in the league right now. And it wasn't for Kevin Durant the last couple years, he would be in the race, top three, top four shortlist for MVP. But, hey, like I said, that's just my take, and I'm a little biased on my man Russ because he plays like an animal, like he's some extraterrestrial from a different planet, from the planet where they create basketball people. Him and KD are from that planet. They was brought here, you know, <laughs> on some mothership, laid at our feet to watch and enjoy. Uh, <laughs> Russ got a little sound by. They said, hey, Russ, why don't you play in the – or why don't you participate in the dunk contest? Oh, I only dunk on people. Come on, man. Only a man who has the type of attitude that Russ has would say that. Only a man that wears the type of pants and wears the type of shirts Russell Westbrook wears would say that. Where they do that at? I guess on Russ World because the man is outrageous. Uh, but <laughs> we're going to jump back into, right into it right now, man. This week's topic is going to be on the NBA playoffs. Today we're going to do the first four top teams in the East. Next day we're going to do the top 
lower four teams in the East, and so forth and so on. We're going to start with the Atlanta Hawks. They're 43-11 and 11 right now. Best team in basketball. I think they're eight games or nine games above the next team, which is Toronto Raptors, but stay on the Hawks. Great starting five. T, Corver, Carroll, Millsack, Corford. You got four All-Stars on that team out of the five. They got player of the month as a team collectively last month. Great story. They came a long way. They got a good coach, a good system they're running. Do I see them winning the championship? No, for one reason. They do not have a superstar. They do not have that upper echelon player that in a crucial game six, game seven, you can throw the, the ball to and he's going to work. They don't have that. You need that. We saw that with KD that year they made it to the finals. In the Western Conference Finals, they go up against a non-injured Kobe Bryant, Paul Gasol, Andrew Bynum, and Metal World Peace at the time. And I don't even know who they five man was. It really doesn't matter. But what did KD do? He went KD brain. He found some extra switch, turned it on, and made Metal World Peace and Kobe look like they shouldn't have been there. Now, that was a great series. I remember where I was that, that game six when KD came down, walked to Meta World Peace to the top of the three-point line and hit him with that, that ooh, that nasty shot. I was at the casino with my boy Ron. It was ridiculous. <laughs> but still in the Hawks now. They don't have that player. They don't have that guy that with four minutes left to go, you down two, you could just run, go through him. Offense through player X. They don't have that guy. They have they have good players, but they don't have that guy that when you're going up against the Cavs and LeBron or the Bulls and D Rose. That can go at them tip for tap. It's going to be games where LeBron going to go off and score 15, 12 in a row. And as is you going to have somebody that can combat that? Because can't nobody guard him. You know, in the East, can't nobody guard him. It used to be Derrick Rose was that guy when he before he got injured that he can go back and forth with LeBron. That's why the Bulls were always in that that conversation with the Cavs saying, oh, they're going to go one. You know, they're going to go back and forth as far as we're going to go to the finals. Because they had that guy who combats Brian offensive prowess. The Pacers, not the Pacers, the Hawks don't have that. They don't have that guy. I mean, Corbin can hit, but he ain't going to shake nobody off the dribble. He ain't going to cook nobody. You know what I'm saying? He's not doing that. The Cavs got three of them guys. Uh, LeBron, Kyrie, and now you can make the case of JR because he can create every night. We saw that when he was in New York and Denver. If he, if he wanted to get busy, he can. That's not his game. He's more of a, a set-up jump shooter, but he can do it. Uh, you guys don't see them making it to the – to the NBA Finals, let alone the Eastern Conference Finals, I feel like they're going to lose to the Bulls in seven or the Cavs in six if they get matched up with them right now. They're going to end up playing Miami in the first round. They're going to beat Miami unless d Wade somehow dips into his holy grail of Jesus juice and just starts booming, gets the, the uh, I don't know what they put in his knee. Whatever they put in his knee, whatever he going to need to do, he need to take some shots to that and stem cells, whatever. Go to Germany with Kobe, did something. He need to do something. But that's that. Toronto. Love Toronto's team, their game. They have a very good news of players, young players. DeRozan is back and healthy. Watch out. That man, when he's hot and his jumper is working. He's never really been a good jump shooter, but when his jumper is working, he can, he can he can go to the rack. And he's 6'7", 220, 225. He can post up a lot of smaller guards and he has the quickness to get around a bigger guard. So he's got that kind of, you know, that game where he can get going. And Lowry, he's proven super. He's an all-star in the league. He's He's going places. It took him a while to get there, but if he stays on this track and works hard, he'll go places. James Johnson, they and he's in starting lineup now. I like the size because he can guard them them big threes, but he can take them smaller threes into the post because he's a he's a pretty big guy. I like his matchup. Other than going against LeBron in the East, I'm trying to think who else you got. Maybe Luol Dane. Uh, it's about it in the East, but that can match his size. I'm not saying he's gonna be a, he's a great offensive player because he's so big. He forces a lot of mismatches during the game. Uh, at their four, they got Amir Johnson, who's starting to become a rebounding machine, a defensive player machine. Like he's just he he does all the little things they need. He can go out and maybe give you 15, maybe 20 on a good night. He's getting a lot of offensive rebounds, but he knows what he needs to do in that role of offense, which is great. And then their center Jonas, who's playing really good. He's got both the over the hook shots, both left and right hand. He's playing good. He's also a good defender and rebounder. So we'll watch out for them. I see them beating Charlotte. Uh, Charlotte's really right now is just really bad, so I don't see Charlotte giving them any much. Maybe maybe five, but because you know Kimba's out, so they might get swept. I don't. My take on they gonna it's gonna go five, but we'll see. Three, who we got at three? I think we have it's Chicago. That's who's at three. D Rose, shot time. <sighs> they got Milwaukee first round. 
Can they beat Milwaukee? Yeah, they gonna beat Milwaukee. Who Milwaukee got? Giannis, Brandon Knight, who's playing good, but D Rose gonna cook him. Uh, Larry Sanders, who they about to buy out his contract, he might even be in the playoffs. Joe, you got Joe Kim Noah and Paul Gasol. You got two seven footers. That's, I think that's gonna be get a sweep. We gonna get a sweep. We gonna see our first sweep of the Eastern Conference playoffs with Chicago Milwaukee. Milwaukee gonna remember a couple years ago. Brandon Jennings said we gonna win in, in four. Or we gonna win in seven. Everybody looked at him like, bruh, take several seats, bro. Like you need to chill. Milwaukee ain't they? Ain't, they I wish the bar was playing. I'm not saying they would win the game, but it'd be it'd be fun to watch the rookie do his thing on that that big stage in the playoffs. But I'm sorry, Milwaukee, y'all getting swept. And fourth, we got Washington. Now I've been a John Wall fan since he was at Kentucky. I watched his YouTube highlights with him his senior year. His senior mixtape of Wall's life is ridiculous. The man spun dunk everything. But this is the league, son. You need to stick with what get you got you there, and that's passion and rock. The man's an assist machine this year. He's averaging 19, and I want to say 11. You can uh, don't quote me on that, but he's playing really good. And he's got his team playing good. Bill being out hurts them a lot. Bill being out really sucks for them because that two guard position is really coveted in the league. Eastern Conference not so much because other than Jimmy Butler and Dwayne Wade, who's on his last leg, who else do you have? Uh, Demar Derozan, uh, who I mentioned earlier. Uh, that's pretty much it at the two spot in Cleveland. JR, Iman, they kind of do it by committee. JR can hit threes. Iman can hit threes, but he's you know, primarily a defender. That's about it. Uh, and they hit missing Bill. The, they lose a lot of their luster off the bench because that guy on the bench has to start now. And who is it? Gary Temple, I think. Gary Temple. Let that sink in. You go from Bradley Bill to Gary Temple. Okay. Let's continue. <laughs> John Wall's going to have to do a lot. If Bill is not to be there, he should be there come the first round. But hopefully he is, because if he's not, it's going to put a lot more scoring stress on John Wall, which he does not need, because the way he's playing now is perfect for that team. He finds Nay Nay in the post. He finds Gortat Roman to the basket on alley oops. He finds Paul Pierce in the corner in the top of the arc for threes. That's his game. His game is cooking his defender, getting to the middle of the paint. And if not hit, having a layup, no more floaters. No more fadeaway jump shots. Not having a layup, he finds one of those four guys for a good shot, if not great shot. And that's John Wall's game. That's what he needs to stick to. Once he learned that, because last year in the playoffs against the Pacers, when they were down that game six, they should have won, in my opinion. He tried to do too much shooting. Mind you, they didn't have Paul Pierce's veteran experience, but they had a reason. He's no Paul Pierce, but a reason is good in his own right, a good shooter. But if it felt like to me Wall was trying to play hero ball. As Mark Jackson would like to coin the term, play hero ball. John Wall, this is not Kentucky. This is not your first three years in the league when we ask you to do have to take 25 shots. John Wall, we we'll need you to take maybe 16, if that, 16 shots. We need you to make the easy ones, make your free throws, hit two open threes. You're going to get a game in fast break opportunities. And none, not, last but least, pass the ball when guys are open. He is the best at going strong right. And drawing a defender and having Nene with that wrap around bounce pass or a Gertat with that alley over the head because he's so quick. All the defenders, as soon as you see him, you got to go to him. Your body's just like telling you to stop him. You know, in basketball, it's telling you, go there, go there, stop that man. And the next, your guy's to the rim for a dunk. That's what John Wall needs to do, needs to keep doing. And maybe they'll be clear. <sighs> maybe. It's really stuff. My take, Cleveland going to win in six. Would I like to see Cleveland lose? No. Do I think there's a chance of possibility in some universe they'll lose? Yes. Is that this one? The run out? No. LeBron's still LeBron. As bad as that man's playing, he's got off the juice. He, he got back on the juice. That's why he went on that 15-game winning streak. The man is juicing, y'all. I don't care what y'all say. That's my take on it. You saw how he played. Lost weight. Man, that lose no damn weight. And then you gain 15 pounds of muscle back in three in in a, in a month. Where they do that at, bruh? Not in Cleveland. <laughs> Maybe in Phoenix where they got all them stem cells in the back. <laughs> Not here, bruh. But we'll get that. Get, we'll get to Cleveland in the next segment. But I really appreciate y'all listening to me. Leave a comment, uh, like, uh, do whatever you gotta do. Hit me up on Instagram at Mr. Underscore Underscore Hemingway 1M and on Twitter at Gabe Hemingway. Uh, Facebook, Gabe Hemingway. Like I said, man, leave me a comment. If you like it, let me know you like it. 
I'm open for open discussion. If you got anything you want me to touch on or talk about or you got any questions for me, just drop me a line and I'll try and answer them and get back to them, man. One love.